This is video number three, and this is going to be another example for application frameworks. Uh, we're going to look at uh, another example for working with a internet search. It's going to be essentially the same thing that you have on the D2L site. There's a set of exercises, 50, and they're all going to be using Gaussian elimination, as you'll see here, and they're going to show you a net work-related simple application of linear algebra to the study of networks. So here's a network. Notice it has four pages. All of the exercises will have four pages. They'll vary by having different connections with different probabilities. Notice if there's no link from internet page two to internet page three, then we have no edge here and no nothing from three to two, no edge there. We're going to assume 10 links per page, many of which point back to the page itself. A number beside an edge will be the probability that a web bot randomly chooses a link to that other page during some given period of time. We won't write down the probability of staying on a page, but that's just one minus the total probability of staying. For example, look at this edge that goes from one to four. Notice that this means there is a 1 in 10 chance during a certain transition period of a bot randomly choosing to go to page 4 from page 1. What this means is that there are 10 links here and only one of them goes to page 4. Now we're going to suppose there are 1,000 bots wandering away through this system. We're going to define variables x1 to xn, in this case 4, to be the number of bots on pages 1 to n, in this case 4, at any given point in time. We're also going to suppose that the system is in equilibrium. That is to say, the number of bots leaving a page in a given period of time will be offset by the number arriving during that period. So let's pause here. This is very important. The total number of bots on a page remains the same over time. Now, equilibrium means that linear combinations must be the same as the original variable. So here's the before, or here's the after, and here's the before. So we have to have them the same because of equilibrium. Remember there was a 1 in 10 chance. This is the 1 over 10 x1 here that you see. The 1 in 10 chance of moving from page 1 to page 4, so in this fourth equation, a 1 in 10 chance, and all these numbers have the same interpretation. We subtract the x1 from here, and notice this was 9 tenths in the original, minus the 1, x1 over here is the negative 1 tenth. Likewise, we subtract and we get the negative 1 fifth. We subtract, we get the negative 1 fifth x3, and so forth. We're also going to have another equation, which is the total number of web bots. And we're going to measure things in thousands. So the sum of x1 to x4 has to always be 1,000. We're not going to use the 1 and with the 0, 0, 0. We'll just keep a simple small number 1, and that means each of these variables is in thousands. So we have to solve this system. These are the four equations from before. This is the sum of all the variables it has to always be 1,000 web bots. The matrix for this system looks like this. And notice all the fractions. One of the nice things about matrices is we can use arithmetic and multiply the whole system by 10 and no more fractions. That works out pretty nice. Now we have a very familiar scenario Notice we have the 1 here. It's negative, but that shouldn't be much of a problem. And we can just do standard Gaussian elimination. When we do that, the largest solution will correspond to the most popular page. Before we begin, though, let's write down the equivalent system of equations. So this is the system that we're actually solving. And again, this is the matrix that we ended up with to solve this system of equations. And no uh, surprises here. We can solve this system using standard Gaussian elimination. There's a 1 in the fourth row, so we switch row 1 with row 4, and now we have 1 in the first row. And we multiply row 1 by 1 and add it to row 4. Now we have a 0, 
where that negative 1 used to be, then multiply by negative 10, the first row, add it to the last row. Now we've got 1 and all zeros below it in the first column. So we're done there. Now I'm not going to uh, belabor this. This is something we've done a lot of. But let's notice it uh, uh, plays out pretty standard. We've got uh, a negative 2 where we need a 1, so we multiply row 2 by negative 1 half, or divide by negative 2, essentially. Now we've got the 1 where we want it. Now we have to get rid of the 1 and the 2 in the second column. And to do so, multiply row 2 by negative 1, add to row 1. Multiply row 2 by negative 2, add to row 4, the second column. Now we look at row 3, we multiply by negative 1 half, that puts a 1 on the main diagonal. Now we need zeros above and below, so we get a 0 in the third column first row, multiply the third row by negative 2, add row 1, and that gets rid of that 2 in the third uh, column of the first row. And then we do two rows below that, and you can see that just using straightforward Gauss combination, we're arriving at a solution. Notice, however, that we end up with a row of all zeros. Now that's okay. That just means zero equals zero. It's not going to mean there are infinitely many solutions. The reason is we have five equations in four variables, x1, x2, x3, x4. This zero row here means we now have equivalent to four equations in four unknowns, x1, x2, x3, x4. So the row of zeros doesn't always mean infinitely many. It just means that there's one fewer row or equation than we actually started with. And now we have four equations, or four non-zero rows, and four unknowns. So we interchange row 4 with row 5. That puts the zeros along the bottom there. We then multiply row 4 by 1 35th and continue in the same fashion. Uh, we get a zero in the fourth row, first column, and so on. And at this point, we're done. Notice we have ones in the northwest corner, zeros along the bottom row, and we have our constants column is three uh, simple fractions. Let's look at them numerically. Uh, and if we look at these numerically, you'll notice that we have a 0 0.285, a 0, a four, 0 0.428, and a 0 0.285. So that means that page 3 is the most popular page in our internet. So this page here, you might not have expected that to begin with, but this page 3 in this system of web pages is our most popular page. Now you're ready for the last video, which will be a short video just introducing to you the concepts in Frameworks 2 and 3.